My friend just did the rudest thing and my feelings are hurt. Now you tell me if you think it's valid or not. A back and forth thing. Hold on. Scotty, wait. Scotty, stop. What? What's, oh, what's up? up? I've never liked you. I've always been jealous of you. I've always hated you. You can predict. My mouth was like, what? I literally kept saying, what? 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 What are you talking about? We were just planning to see each other next month. All of us, our families getting together and having a good time for the holidays. And this is how you were feeling the entire time. Rising my lovely butterflies. This is the awakened butterfly and I am back with another video If this is your first time coming across my channel Please stay for the entire video or check out some of my existing content If you enjoy this type of content, please don't hesitate to subscribe Welcome and welcome back all of my lovely butterflies. I pray that everyone is having a blessed and amazing day I pray that everyone's continuing to take care of themselves mentally physically and spiritually I love you guys so much. I send nothing but positive energy your way. And as always, the love and support that you guys show me on this channel is always appreciated. If you haven't already, please make sure that you hit the post notification so you can be notified every time I post a video. Without further ado, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into this video. And as you can tell by the title, we will indeed today be talking about the frenemy epidemic as well as the mean girl agenda. Now, this is an informative video as well as a prophetic message. This message is for your protection. And God wants to, you to observe the behaviors of those that you call friends at this time. For whoever this message is for, if you feel that it resonates with you, please go back and pray to the Most High for further confirmation. Now, this message is not for everybody. However, if you came across this video, it's not by coincidence. Now, there are some people out there who pretend to be your friend. They pretend to be there for you. You know, they pretend to be happy for you. They're smiling in your face. But behind those smiles holds an underlying jealousy that can lead them to be very deceitful and backstabbing towards you. And the Most High, when he gave me this message, he kept playing the song, What About Your Friends by TLC in my head. And he also led me to Proverbs chapter 6, verses 34, which reads, For jealousy is the rage of a man, therefore he will not spare in the day of vengeance. For whoever this message is pertaining to, you may be in the company of some friends who are showing their true colors through mean girl behavior tactics. And either you haven't noticed or you have noticed and you choose not to address it for whatever the reason may be. You know, maybe you and this person has been friends since grade school, you know, and you have accepted their ways as a means of maintaining the friendship. You know, you're just like, well, you know, this is just how they are. You know, it's cool. I, you know, I accept it. It kind of outweighs, it doesn't outweigh, you know, everything else. So, you know, maybe you've just accepted as a part of who this person really is. And it's cool with you. And just for the sake of maintaining the friendship, you chose to accept it. But for this reason, you may even laugh it off when they say or do certain things towards you. And these are things that you may perceive as rude and demeaning coming from someone else. But since it's this person and they're your friend, it's okay. You know, and this person is very manipulative. You may feel uncomfortable addressing the situation for that reason as well. And this could be due to them taking it the wrong way. This could be due to you being gaslit. You know, you may have spent a lot of time with this person and you know that they probably won't admit to mistreating you in the first place. And the whole situation you feel would probably result in them gaslighting you and you being drained from trying to convince them of something that deep down they already know. Because let's face it, people know how they're treating you. People are pretty much aware of their behaviors because they're the one who's 
conducting the behavior. And whatever the reason may be, if you are noticing signs that your close friends may be frenemies and you are hesitant about confronting them or parting ways, just know that it is very important that you pay attention to the way people treat you. Because the way people treat you is the way that they feel about you. And if you are in a friendship with someone at this time and you feel that they're acting strange towards you or even saying or doing things to you that real friends shouldn't do or say to each other, this is the most high revealing their true colors to you at this time. And he wants you to act in accordingly for your peace and protection. Now, butterflies, lately... I have been seeing videos all over TikTok discussing the mean girl agenda and how it has caused a negative social impact on our society, especially amongst women. Now, according to girlsleadership.org, the mean girl behavior consists of friends publicly humiliating, spreading rumors about each other, including or excluding specific friends from their group based on beauty or social standards, turning friends against friends, and even engaging in physical altercations. Now, as an example, this type of behavior is publicly displayed all the time in reality shows. These shows usually feature women who portray themselves as mean girls in real life, always into destructive behavior, you know, constantly getting into altercations with each other, bullying and rejecting the odd girl out, gossiping about each other behind each other's back, you know, even going as far as to getting with each other's partners behind one another's back. Now, for many of you who like watching these shows, which I used to love watching reality TV shows, you may see it as pure entertainment or as a guilty pleasure. And, you know... And this is just as far as it goes. You just see it as entertainment. However, there are some who actually view these public behaviors as a blueprint to becoming more popular, controlling, and even intimidating. And this is mainly amongst the young crowd. And it usually reminds you of the popular 2004 movie Mean Girls where Regina George was not only the main bully of her clique, but was also the leader due to her looks, popularity, financial, and social status. You know, and when you are amongst the Regina Georges of the world, you become aware of how much the Mean Girls agenda has not only encouraged bullying and disrespect, but has also influenced social dynamics in teenagers and adults. Now, TikTok is a place where Several people has gone and expressed how they are against the Mean Girl agenda and how they feel that it should be stopped, while others see the behavior patterns as a way to gain control or popularity as a form of protection from others or as a form of protection from others. And the reason why they use this as a form of protection for others is to make it difficult for others to get close to them. And this usually occurs after being repeatedly betrayed. Now I'm going to show you guys some clips and I'll be right back. My friend just did the rudest thing and my feelings are hurt. Now you tell me if you think it's valid or not. So I was eating dinner downtown with my friend and... I was talking to her about her day and she was like, yeah, I have a really bad migraine. My head is hurting. I had a dinner party, but I don't think I'm going to go. And I was like, oh, that sucks, girl. And then this other girl came by that's a friend of hers that I had never met. And she sat down and they started talking. And I was like kind of on the outskirts, kind of like awkwardly adding to the conversation, but not completely. And I introduced myself and my friend goes right in front of me to this new girl. I'm going to a dinner party right now tonight. Do you want to come with me? And she says this 
just to the girl and not to me. And she knows full well that I was not doing anything. And it just felt so awkward. And the girl even was like, oh yeah, like, are you going to be there trying to be polite and talking to me? And I was just awkwardly like, no, because I wasn't invited, but she still didn't invite me. And I probably wouldn't have even gone, but it's just the principle, you know? Story time on how I found out my best friend of five years, my baby's godmother, actually hated me our entire five years of being friends. And yesterday, she confessed to me after five years, she never liked me. She hated my guts the entire time. And why you should vet your friendships just the same way that you vet your relationships. Me and this girl was friends since 2020 during the pandemic, like early 2020. We met on social media. I think it was even 2019. We hit it off real well. She... We had the same interests, I'll just say that. We didn't officially meet up in person until I moved to Atlanta in 2021 because she lives in South Carolina and I was in New Jersey, New York. So obviously coming to South Carolina was not in the plans. We built in a friendship, we're getting real close. I get married 2021. She was already married for two years when we met. So our husbands met, they got super close. We had this whole like family group chat. We all close and dee 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 die, right? We are like peas in the pod, all of us. I say peas in a pod, I mean families meeting each other, hanging out at each other's houses. We even felt comfortable when we found out we were pregnant in 2022 that they were going to be our new baby's godmother and godfather. So this all is catching me by surprise. Had to give you a little backstory. Yesterday, I get a call, ring, 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 ring. Catches me off guard, completely off guard. Homegirl says, hey, I have something to tell you. I've been feeling this way for so long. But mind you, as of recently, I've been telling my husband, I feel like something is off between me and her. Like, you know when you have that feeling, ladies? Like, you know when you know when you know. You have a feeling something is off. But everything kept flying over my head. So she asked, can she call me? We get on the phone. And she's like, all right, I got something to tell you. For the past four or five years, I've never liked you. I've always been jealous of you. I've always hated you. You can predict. My mouth was like, what? I literally kept saying, what, 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 what are you talking about? We were just planning to see each other next month. All of us, our families getting together and having a good time for the holidays. And this is how you were feeling the entire time. But that's not even a half of what she had to say. She goes on to say that she was always praying against the things that I was praying for. So when I was telling her that my husband and I were praying for a baby, and this was two years ago, almost three years ago, when I was telling her these things, she said that she was praying and hoping that we wouldn't conceive. She was praying and believing that when we were pregnant, the baby wouldn't be born. When I was pregnant around like 26, 27 weeks, you know, when you get tests for gestational diabetes, I was actually diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I had to retake the test. So, you know, you call your friend, you tell your friend or whatever, like, hey, like pray for me and all these things. Girl said that she was praying that the opposite would happen of what we wanted, which is, of course, for the gestational diabetes to be removed so that I can have a healthy pregnancy. If you know anything about gestational diabetes in itself, you know that that's nothing to play with when you are pregnant at all. So the fact that she found that fun and joyful and I still called her a best friend and she knew that this baby was going to be her godchild and she felt comfortable feeling that way blows my mind. So anyways, the whole time we were on the phone, I'm just listening. I'm just quiet because I'm trying to like take in everything that she's saying because I actually can't believe that these things were going over my head. One time while I was pregnant, it was November of 2022 and that was due March 2023. I, was, I came to her because I had a feeling like something was off. And again, like when you feel something is off, you really need to take heed and pray about whatever it is that you feel is off of your spirit. So I said something was off. I addressed it with her and we agreed that we both can do better as friends. I should have took that as a sign right then and there to dead this friendship. But she assured me that what I was feeling off was not the case. She was genuinely there to be my friend. The same time I felt this way was the same time I had the gestational diabetes and she felt a way about me being pregnant, I suppose. 
She continued on to say that she's always felt competition between us. Whenever I started my photography business, she felt competition in there. Whenever she seen that we were essentially making money moves, I'll just say it like that, she felt some sort of way about that. So last year, December, November, I don't know if you've seen on my TikTok page, if you scroll down, I shared that we were facing eviction, right? She knew about that and her husband knew about that because we were all close. We we're like family. So like we're going to the people that we're the most closest to, to pray for us and to cover us that of course that we don't end up on the street with a nine month old. This girl prayed that we would not have a home to live in. She prayed, she said this out of her own mouth. She was just hoping that we would end up homeless with the nine month old that is her godchild and then still had the audacity to open up her home for us to live there even though she was feeling these things. She said that it made her feel like they were doing better than us. This is a best friend, somebody that you're confiding in. I was almost like dishing information for her to pray against on me. That it for me wasn't the fact that she didn't like me this whole entire time is that I gave her access to my child, the one that I have prayed for to be here. And I entrusted her to come into agreement with me for this baby. But she had a whole separate agenda this entire time of canceling his life. And I entrusted her to be his godparent. I'll leave it here because she says way more. If you want to hear a part two, then let me know in the comments. But I'm going to just leave one thing for you ladies. Vet your friendships the same way that you are going to vet your relationships. The same way that you're going to pray and seek God about if this is the person that you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with, you need to be praying and asking God, is this a friendship I need to be pouring myself out into? You need to pray and ask God for discernment when we're sharing things with friends. That is women. Sometimes we just want to get all close because we like the same things. We like content creation. We all just going to be friends. We like photography. We just all going to be friends. And no, like ask God, what is the kingdom purpose here for our friendship? Is this somebody I'm going to do life with? Is this somebody I should share my deepest, darkest secrets with? Is this somebody that I can trust with my entire life? Is this somebody I could bring around family? The list goes on. You need to vet your friendships the same exact way that you're going to be vetting your relationships. And that's one thing that I took away from this. And these things for sure would never happen again. Well, I don't know, girl, I'm just excited that God has removed the one thing that I knew was a hindrance in my life. And now I can just move forward with what God has for me in this season. But overall, I just feel like this is all crazy. <laughs> this is just... This is like a movie. I can't believe it. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. The behaviors that are associated with the mean girl agenda are not always displayed by women. Men are known to display these type of behaviors towards each other as well. Also, someone can pretend to be a loyal friend without showing an obvious sign of betrayal, yet they can be doing underhanded things behind your back. Now, in this case, if you guys feel that way at this time, make sure that you pray to God to show you who's for you and who's not for you. And just always know that God will reveal things to you in due time. Now, when the Most High gives us the answers by revealing true actions of our enemies, we must take heed because if not careful and ignoring the signs could cause us harm and possibly our lives. I'm going to show you guys a video clip of a woman who was severely injured from an acid splash by the hands of her own best friend. Hi, my name is Naomi Ani, and this is my story, how I survived an acid attack. I was 12 when I met this friend and we both went to the same secondary school. Our relationship grew but it was also very toxic certain signs and things that she did i should have looked out for she would just berate me sometimes and say really horrible things when i was in school as a teenager i was quite shy so i kind of didn't like confrontation i tried my best not to be argumentative and with her she had a very weird way of being other girls noticed that she was quite begrudgeful it was something that a lot of girls wanted to stay away from if i was her friend i did not want to be on the bad side of her as we were teenagers her family were quite strict so she wasn't always allowed out 
So I had a lot of other friends and I was quite popular in my school year. And sometimes in the classroom and I'd be laughing with my friends, she would just send me over a blank stare, a threatening stare even. I had people warn me. I had people also laugh at her. They used to say she was like copying me, that she wanted to be like me and stuff like that. So like they used to say like she was quite obsessed. When people would express this to me i would always say you know she's my friend i would always defend her and say we're friends there was a slow separation in our friendship and at this point i was 18 we were studying at different places we just didn't see much of each other and i had a boyfriend and she sent him a really horrible text just saying a lot of horrible things about me when I heard that it came, the text was from Mary, I remember texting her saying, I don't know why you sent this text message. It was just no need for her interference in my relationship. And it was just a new relationship. She didn't know much about it. So she was just trying to ruin things for me. And that was the first sign I saw that something was wrong. So I confronted Mary about the messages. We argued, it was quite a bitter argument. And then I didn't speak to her for about a year. And she called me one day and she was like, hello. And I was like, who is it? And she was like, it's Mary. And I was like, oh, Mary, how are you? I wasn't angry anymore. I was now in a new relationship. So I had a new boyfriend. So I was just over the past and she had said to me you know i was so angry with you i wanted to throw acid in your face she was angry at me because i think for the first time in our friendship i really gave her what she was giving me back and i think it was years of like a lot of insults and just berating me that I just all put together and I just kind of like let go in that instance and just kind of went off on her after she told me that I was like you know if someone was to do that to me they're going to prison right like that's not possible and I was, she was just like you know oh you know she was just joking that she didn't really mean it and then we went on to just kind of say sorry to each other, forgive each other and like move on. She came to see me one day actually when I was working in Victoria's Secret in Stratford Westfields. I was kind of becoming again really popular and I had my boyfriend. So the day that it happened, I was getting ready for work. I had a late shift. I remember going to Stratford and just feeling like oh the day's gonna be short it's gonna be over and done with and before you know it i'll be back home and then on my way home as i was getting off the bus to cross the road to go home i was on the phone to my boyfriend while i was on the bus and that's when i saw someone in a niqab she was wearing all black and she had like a black covering so i didn't recognize it was her and as i was about to cross the road i just felt a huge splash and I was screaming, I remember I was screaming, screaming, screaming. My skin was burning. I still have the scars here, obviously on my face, some on my chest. I just remember running to my door, screaming, screaming. And then my mom opened the door and I just saw the whole house, my whole family's face just dropped. I remember running upstairs, taking off my lashes, taking off my clothes having to go in the bath my godmother had to like rinse me throw so much water on me throw so much water on me my mom was calling the ambulance my cousins were all around me in the bathroom like you know put her in the bath throw water on her and i remember i was just shivering 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 making noises just like who would do this to me am i ugly am i ugly no one's ever gonna marry me no one's ever gonna marry me i'm ugly now no one's ever gonna marry me the ambulance came and i was rushed straight to the hospital i just remember being sat down on like a wheelchair 
and then on a chair and them having to pour like this huge shower of cold water on me freezing cold as my skin is my flesh is literally being burnt i was in the hospital for a month i had to have surgeries on my face so the first layer my skin had been burnt third degree so they had to take off all the burnt skin and replace it with skin from my thigh and put it on my face and put it on my scars the acid had burnt my eyelids so it had got into both my eyes and burnt off this eyelid and i had to have skin from behind my ear removed to create an eyelid initially i thought someone was out to kill me so while i was in hospital i was feeling like i just missed a lucky shot like i was very lucky to be alive so i'm just gonna troop this through until we find out who did it at the time i didn't know who had done it i didn't know who it was until the police had told me that mary was the one underneath the niqab basically the bag she war that day she brought to the police station when being questioned and from there on they searched her home and found evidence that it was her i had left the hospital and when i found out that it was mary that had done it i basically couldn't eat and speak for about 3 days i was in such shock in utter shock i couldn't say anything Mary was sentenced to 12 years and she had to do 6. So she's out now. When I found out it was her, it shocked me because after the attack, I had a surprise birthday party for my 21st birthday. So my ex-boyfriend threw me a surprise birthday party. I at the time had no eyelids. I could barely walk because of my skin graft, but I went and mary showed up knowing that she was the one that had done it mary showed up at this point i didn't know that she was there and she was there pretending to cry and i was rubbing her back saying don't worry i'll be okay don't cry don't cry i finally connected the dots and i realized that she really meant what she said and she did it so like I can only wonder what was going through her mind she obviously was very jealous of me which was something that I didn't really pick up on I didn't notice I just thought she's kind of outlandish with everyone <laughs> so this is just her kind of personality and then obviously when all said and done and she did what she did I was like oh wow she was really 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 jealous this is the ultimate betrayal i used makeup as a way to move on it really helped me just restore the essence of myself and that importance of i'm still here i've had to have countless surgeries i've had to have countless help with you know doctors and nurses in terms of my health, my mental health and trying to stay positive and be positive it gets hard it still is quite hard every day Now according to girlsleadership.org the main girl agenda is a set of demonstrated behaviors based around feelings of insignificance and insecurity The article also went further on to explain how these behaviors are also stemmed out of jealousy or being admired by the opposite sex. Now, when you have friends who are jealous of you, it's because they view you they view you as a threat. And this is because you trigger their insecurities within. Remember, jealousy can be caused from any quality, not just looks. A person cannot just say that a person is jealous of another person because of their looks. There are several reasons why a person can be jealous of someone. They can be jealous of your intelligence, they can be jealous of the way you carry yourself, they can be jealous of your reputation. They can be jealous of your career goals, your family and love life. There's a lot of reasons 
you know, why a person could be jealous of you. And if you are friends with a narcissist, they will pretend to be confident and have a high self-esteem, but suffer on the inside from a low implicit self-esteem. You just being you could unknowingly trigger these insecurities within them. And some of you may have or may have had friends that all of a sudden begin to act funny with you out of nowhere. And you are asking them what's wrong, you know, asking them if you even did something wrong. And they may even say to you that everything is fine, but continue to act weird. And, you know, it is possible that these people are envious of you, but they want to continue a relationship with you in order to copy your style, your ideas, your plans, you know, or even plan to sabotage you or continue to secretly sabotage you behind your back. Now, for any of you that has watched the movie Juice, which is a movie that I grew up watching, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen this movie as well. But the character Bishop that was played by Tupac Shakur, he was jealous of his friend. And he wanted to be the leader of the group. He wanted to call the shots. He wanted the juice. And he, on one hand, tried to pretend to be a loyal friend. However, his narcissistic traits led to aggressive behavior whenever he felt that his ego was being threatened. Now, in this day and age, the spirit of jealousy and envy is busy on earth. And it is inhabiting people with deep insecurities, people who don't understand their purpose and significance on this earth. And as in related to the movie Juice, Bishop didn't understand his role and his significance. So he admired the role and significance of another person to the point to where he took that person out in hopes of taking their position in hopes of being them. And there are a lot of bishops out here in this world. And the enemy is using these type of people to portray those close to them in the process, hurting family, friends, even ruining relationships. You know, and these things are usually revealed through certain signs that the Most High will even allow these people to show you. And we're going to go over a couple of those signs right now. And one of those signs is just, it's very obvious. You know, it's their behavior towards you. You know, they can be mean. They can be sarcastic. They can humiliate you in private or in front of other people. They can have a bullying, controlling, and intimidating demeanor towards you. These are the most obvious signs that this is not a friend of yours. And if any of you are in a friendship with someone and they're treating you this way, it's something that needs to be addressed. And at this point, if they're treating you like this, it's probably just grounds to just walk away and not even put the energy into addressing it. Because if they're treating you this way, they're probably going to just gaslight you and try and manipulate you when you address the situation anyway. Another sign is they never defend you. They never speak up for you. You know, they allow others to talk about you. They allow others to do sneaky things behind your back and they wouldn't even tell you. These are the type of people that are very sneaky. They're very underhanded and they're only around you for their own selfish motives. They don't have your best interest at heart. A true friend wouldn't allow someone to talk about their friend or mistreat them behind their back. So if anyone's doing this towards you and the most I has shown you that they never try to defend you or speak up for you, it's a sign that this person is probably not a, a real friend to begin with. Another sign is they may give you funny stares when they think that you aren't looking. Have you ever been around someone where you guys are laughing and talking one minute and you turn your back and you can see out the corner of your eye that they're giving you a funny look. This is a very 
two-faced sneaky person and they really don't like you they're very snakish they smile in your face but they have cruel intentions towards you behind your back and i don't care how they treat you when you guys are face to face if you ever look out the corner of your eye and you see someone looking at you like that that is a clear sign that they are not a true friend and they don't have your best interest at heart and they're probably you know, bound to do some deceitful things to you one day. Another sign is they never congratulate you on your accomplishments. Now, if you're around somebody and every time something good happens to you, they never congratulate you. They seem to, you know, start acting weird, getting an attitude, acting standoffish. It's, it's out of jealousy and envy. They're not really happy for you but they're just around you pretending to be happy for you. And these are the type of people that will not only hold in how they feel just in order to be around you, but they will also try and sabotage what you have going on. So always watch out for people like that. If they, if Real friends congratulate friends. Real friends encourage and motivate their friends to do better. So always remember that, guys. Another sign is they may try and copy you, copy your style, your behaviors, your career, just a lot of things about you. This is because they don't like you, but they admire what you do. They admire who you are as a person, and they envy you for being that person with all of these qualities to the point to where they want your qualities. They love the qualities that you have, but they would like it better if it was them that were possessing these qualities. And it makes them very jealous of you. And it's usually people like this. They don't have a sense of direction in life. They don't, you know, they haven't figured out their calling or their purpose and they don't know what route to take. But it causes them to be jealous and envious of people who they feel that has a clear path and what they're supposed to be doing in life. It's, and also when they see these things working out for this person. So always be careful, guys, you know, about the people that you keep around you. Always pay attention to the signs. Now, I just want to let you guys know, quick disclaimer, this message is not for everyone. However, if you come across this message, it's not a coincidence. The Most High is trying to get your attention. He wants you to pay attention to the actions of the people that you call family and friends at this time and if you did come across you know this video and you feel that this video is confirmation for you please make sure you go back and pray to the most high for further confirmation i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i hope that this video helped someone uh, if you guys don't mind please don't hesitate to share this video Please don't hesitate to like this video. Let me know how you feel about this topic at hand down in the comment section. I love you guys so much. Continue to take care of yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. I do have more content coming your way. And until the next video, peace and blessings. Mwah.